there are mysterious trails going up Mount Tamalpais that look as if they led to that place that we were talking about this morning, the secret garden, which every child remembers. And they disappear through trees, and there's a kind of a mysterious little canyon when you can hear the sound of a waterfall and you know somewhere in there is that garden. I, I know, as a matter of fact, where it is. There is one. But, always when you follow the road right through, it leads back to San Rafael and its suburbs on the other side, you see. <laughs> I have been years seeking the ideal place and uh, I've come to the conclusion that it, the only way I can possibly find it is to be it. Uh, if you can find it in you, then anywhere you go is the ideal place to live. But it's so fascinating projecting it outside and going on a look for it. I mean, this is the whole of fun. That's what fun means. So, when therefore religion is abandoned, you are in a dangerous fix. because you can very easily slip into madness. We were talking this morning about a vision. Uh, Lloyd brought up this question about the vision of a fourth dimension or another dimension, and anybody who looked at it went crazy. And this is a real danger that people who have the mystical vision, whether through practicing yoga or Zen Buddhism or hesychast Christian prayers or by taking LSD, become a serious menace to society. And society gets really worried about them because they have, they, they're not taking the world and its concerns seriously any longer. They know it's an illusion. And if you really know it's an illusion, if you really know I'm an illusion, I don't know what you're going to do with me. I don't know whether I trust you. I don't know whether you're going to keep the rules. I, I just don't know about you. You've seen through it, and goodness only knows. You may do anything. And if you're not sure of yourself, and you suddenly see that all this is an illusion, there's nothing you can cling to, it's all relative, uh, you may get bugged, and you may go nuts. That's the great danger in all of this. And that is why a Zen monastery is at one and the same moment a place of total iconoclasm of seeing through the whole thing and yet at the same time it maintains a discipline as clean and strict as any way you can find. The combination of the two is simply marvelous. Unfortunately, modern Japan doesn't dig it.
But you, you, what they've done is to, they, they well recognized that you cannot go into outer space and come back to this world without strict controls. It's exactly the same way when you're skin diving. You go below a certain number of fathoms and you experience weightlessness. Now a person who's not properly trained at that level will get happy. Now there's no reason why you shouldn't get happy provided you keep your wits about you. Nothing matters at all when your weight vanishes because after all you don't matter anymore. You have no weight. Nothing is weighty. Nothing is important. And a person may at this point take off his oxygen mask and offer it to a fish. <laughs> In which case he'll drown. He'll never come back. And if he stays down too long, he enjoys this too much, his oxygen supply will run out and he'll be lost. So he has a watch. And he knows, according to discipline, that at a certain time on this instrument, he's got to come up. It's like when you had too much to drink and you're driving, you've got to watch your speedometer. Drive by instruments. When you're in a difficult situation in an airplane and you've lost your sense of gravity, Watch your instrument. Don't trust your senses. You see? This is very important. In Buddhist imagery, there are guardians of the directions of the universe. And they are all in the figure of Chinese generals with clubs and swords and very fierce expressions. And they are always put at gates, you know, gates are north, south, east and west, and here are the guards. They guard the entrances. But what they really guard is the directions, because it's absolutely important that we can agree on our time scale and on our north, south, east and west so that I can meet you. If we can't agree about that, we'll miss each other completely. We'll never meet. And if we can't meet, we can't have dinner together. If we can't have dinner together, we can't love each other. <laughs> 